How's it going, guys? Welcome to Reviews. I'm Chase Lee, and this is live. Um, I'm here to review Most Likely to Succeed, and with live, uh, since I am doing this live, you can comment in the place for help with my voice and let me know. Uh, you know, if there's anything you want to know about. Did you guys see that? Did you guys see that? Okay. <laughs> So what happens when you do it live. Anyways, if you have any questions about the movie or whatever, if you want to ask me anything, just comment in a place for all my face. So uh, I'm covering the Dallas International Film Festival, and so this is my fifth film uh, of the festival, and I'm here to review that. So let me go ahead and describe it to you. It is a documentary. Uh, Most Likely to Succeed examines the history of education in the United States, revealing the growing shortcomings of conventional education methods in today's innovative world and exploring compelling new approaches that aim to revolutionize teaching as we know it. After seeing this film, uh, the way you think about school will never be the same. And uh, uh, documentaries are really hard to review like on a cinematography and like acting level because they're real people. So it's pretty much just going to be about the idea of the movie and if it really conveys uh, a side, both sides, what have you. So um, it is directed and uh, written by Greg Whiteley and he was actually at the screen last night. So I'm going to put this down. Um, so basically this film uh, kind of goes through the history of education in school. So it starts out with you know, a classroom and like learning a, uh, learning a subject and then, you know, moving on to the next subject and stuff. And then we revolutionize into having a school with multiple rooms to where like one room will be math, one room will be science and stuff. And now we're in the year 2015 and these methods don't really work anymore because in the documentary, they say that, you know, this method was invented for like the industrial revolution and stuff. Because everyone, uh, you know, back in the old days were farmers and stuff. Everyone's jobs were predictable. They knew what they wanted to be. And so when the Industrial Revolution started, you know, uh, they started forming these schools so people could go, go to classes and learn, you know, about working on assembly lines and stuff. And uh, that's how it got started uh, from what I can remember. And, you know, it, we've kept that same method I think they said for like 120 years. And with today's technology and fast information society, like, I don't, I agree with them. I don't think that this is a conventional way to teach kids anymore because I'm going to be honest with you guys. I am 25. I graduated college three years ago. And, you know, I remember in high school, and this, I'm, I was still under the traditional method where it's like you go to one uh, class, one subject for like 45 minutes a day, and then you switch. You know, that's nice, and you can learn everything, but all you're really doing is leading up to a test, and you're trying to memorize the answers as fast as possible so you can just pass the test and just move on with your life. But when you get into the real world, I can tell you this firsthand, it's nothing like that. When you have a job, it's not about test. It's about communication. It's about leadership. It's about interacting with other coworkers. It's about being creative and outside the box and thinking differently on how you can solve problems and if you need to ask someone for help on problems and stuff. And so that's, I totally agree with this movie that you we should change the education system. Uh, it's just, I don't think, because kids' mindsets nowadays is you graduate uh, high school, you go to college, and then you get a job with a degree. That's not the case anymore. I graduated with a bachelor's degree, and it was hard as hell to find a job. And it's it's not as easy as it was back then, because back then the economy was booming and stuff, and those jobs were more accessible. Now that we've kind of fallen, fallen into the slump, it's really hard for college graduates to find a job even with a degree and it's a tough market man like and so i i totally i totally agree that like we should change kids mindsets into thinking differently on how to approach real world situations and you know job interviews and stuff so let's get into the movie uh uh greg whiteley does take the stance of we should change it and you know he brings on people from colleges and stuff like you know professors and they talk about the old school method and like uh, 
how it's worked for so long and we shouldn't change it. He talks to the parents of kids that are going to this new school, this new inventive school. And they're just like, I, you know, there needs to be textbooks. There needs to be organization structure. This is kind of like a free roam anarchy school. So I think everyone's scared because we, we've been, we've been on the same regiment in terms of education for, you know, like you said, 120 years. I think it's about time we kind of switched up a little bit because we're in a different world now where if you like back then, if you had a question, you had to go ask someone and you kind of had to figure it out on your own or with another person. Now, if you have a question and I could do it right here on my computer, you can go to Google and find it out. It's, it's not that hard now. And so I think with the society and the age that we're living in, I think we should kind of switch it up and change it a little bit. So I'm totally for that. So this movie focuses on going to a, a school called High Tech High, and it focuses on these group of children who were in a public school from like uh, kindergarten to eighth grade. And so they jump into this new high school, High Tech High, and the teaching system is different. Like the first day of school, uh, teacher sits down and uh, he has a design on the board and he's like, all right, you see that? There's uh, a square and there's a bunch of X's. The square represents the tables and uh, the X's represent the chairs. I want you to create that uh, design right now with the desk and chairs. And then he just leaves. And then the kids are a little stunned. They don't know what to do. And then uh, he's like, well, and then he comes back and he's like, well, it's not going to do it itself. You need to, you need to, um, uh, <laughs> you need to figure this out and work as a team. And then they start doing it. And you, you, you kind of sit back and most parents might scoff at him and be like, this teacher doesn't know what he's talking about. Like he needs to sit them down and have them read books. No, I think what he was doing was actually really good because when you're in high school, you're, you're four years away from entering into the college life. And that's a completely different jungle out there, kids. So, you know, he's kind of getting them ready for the real life, real world. Like, you know, you need to be in an environment where you can work together because most jobs, unless you work by yourself and solely by yourself, you're going to be working with other people and you need to learn how to adapt to that. And you need to learn how to speak up and be a leader and be this strong voice in a community, in your community, and, you know, voice your opinion, like, and, and kind of figure out how they're going to solve this and stuff. And I think that's really good life skills. And like I said, most parents of the kids, they do not, they're a little hesitant because, you know, they grew up on, you know, traditional methods, just like I did. And, you know, they're just a little hesitant at first, but I think we fear, we fear change. And so, I understand why they're kind of scared, but at the same time, we don't know if this new system of teaching is going to fail or if it's going to be even better than what's going on right now. I think that's what the director was trying to get across is that we don't know if it's going to work, but we don't know if it's not going to work. We also don't know if it's going to be the same um, results as the old system. So I think those are the questions that he asked, and I think those are the questions that he presents pretty well to make you kind of determine, like, you know, should we change the educational system? And, and like I said, I think that's what the director of nails perfectly is just kind of raising questions so we can kind of uh, get the ball rolling on this and maybe try something new. And so it focuses on uh, a, this, this documentary particularly focuses on two people. It focuses on a very quiet girl who we see at the very beginning and, you know, kind of a, a little, little geeky guy. And, you know, the quiet girl, uh, you know, when she starts first answering questions where she's very quiet, she's very tense. but then when at the very end, like she's actually directing her own play and it's like, you gotta be proud about yourself. Like most people, most parents would look at that and be like, well, they didn't learn anything. Did do you know geography or history or anything? No, but they learn life skills and it's actually going to really help them when they have job interviews and stuff and really feel like they're a part of a team or whatever instead of, you know, because if she would have just been through a public school throughout the rest of her life, she probably would have been a very quiet bookworm and it would have been really hard for her to like get out there and try to find a job and stuff because guys, I'm going to be, this is like hundred percent truth coming down. I am not the best at what I do. 
I'm really not. I I consider myself an average filmmaker because that's what I major. I major in film. I consider my, myself an average filmmaker, and I'm learning and growing every day. But the reason why I've gotten the jobs that I've gotten is because I have good work ethic. I work well with people. I can communicate, and I can I can like I said I can gel with most people, and that's important. That's actually more important than skills. Is that you have to learn how to be interactive with people. Like that's that's the most important trait. And I think her growing into this very you know talkative person at, towards the end of the movie, it's like this school's doing something right, and you have to kind of just sit back and you know kind of think about that. And just like this school is not as bad as you think, you know. So, but then the other guy, because uh, uh, this school has like an exhibition night where like they create something that's their test or whatever, and they display it to their parents and you know, people in the town. And so this kid, you know, makes like a bunch of gears and stuff that kind of like rotate and like kind of all form and like all move, uh, in, you know, a uniform motion. So, uh, towards the end of the movie, he doesn't get his project done in time. And you know what he does? He, he perseveres himself and he actually goes back to the school like four weeks into summer break. And he still continues to work on it and fix his problems and, try to figure out what gear is going to work with this, what gear is going to work with that. And he finishes it. And you, you can't sit there and tell me that that was not important. This kid, because that's what the school teaches. People make mistakes in life. It, it's a matter of getting up and trying to do it better. You know, like you make a mistake, you realize what you did wrong. You have to go at it 10 times harder than the second time and try to improve yourself. And that's what this kid did. Like he failed. He failed at the very end of the movie. And he explained to the teachers why he failed and he wanted to continue to work on it. And what does he do? He continues to work on it and he succeeds. This school taught him that. This school taught him that you're going to make mistakes in life, but it's all about how you get up and how you, you, you fight back and try harder and figure out your problem. That's fantastic. And so – that's what this whole documentary is about. And so with the director, he does present both sides. Not so much on the public side, but more on this alternative teaching side. Like he has clips and stuff of old school teaching and you know professors and graphs and stuff. But for the most part, it focuses on this new school. And I think what he was trying to get at us was just kind of show us this new innovative way of teaching and kind of make us question – uh, our current education system right now. So uh, good job on the director on that. And I know I rambled on, but I just want to tell you more about the story and like uh, what, what was going on in this movie. So that's why I think about the directing it, uh, and picking sides and whatnot and really showing this new alternative way. So it can make us question on what we actually want in the future. So uh, acting, you can't judge acting in a documentary. It's impossible because they're real life people being filmed like they're not professional actors so <laughs> you can't do acting cinematography i mean all the interview shots were nicely lit nicely shot had nice uh depth of field uh uh some of the shots in the the when they're at the new school were like on a like a glide cam or whatever so like it'd be on like on the ground or whatever and it kind of like move slowly this way uh probably on a slider or something. So uh, those shots look really cool. They look really gorgeous. And that, that school looked really awesome, by the way. It was really cool uh, design. So like I said, some is clean for a documentary. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, editing, this movie's like an hour and a half. I was engaged throughout the entire thing, man. As soon as the movie started, uh, because it started on uh, Ken Jennings, you know, the guy that won like 100 days of Jeopardy in a row, and they brought him back and he got beat by a robot in uh, Jeopardy. They brought on a robot uh, to see if he could beat an actual robot with intelligence and he couldn't. So it was a great, it was a great opener. I would say it, yeah, I would say, I would say it hooked me. So uh, the opener was great. Uh, as far as like the pace of it goes, I didn't find it boring. Cause like, I was just intrigued at like how the school function and, I just I really wanted to see their end game and see how these kids grew and stuff and I was really satisfied with the conclusion and stuff and it was very kind of inspiring so 
and it'll definitely make you question the educational system for damn sure. So that's my thoughts on uh, this documentary. I think it's one of the better ones at this festival. So uh, if it comes to your area, most likely to succeed about the school education system, I, I implore you to check it out. It's 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 very well done. So I, I think I tend overall. Whew, I'll give it a solid 7.5 out of 10. And that, that's just my thoughts. I, I don't think it's like one of the best documentaries ever made. I'm not going to give it like a 9 or a 10, but I think a 7.5 is pretty damn good. So uh, have you seen Most Likely to Succeed? And if you have, Or if you haven't, comment in the place below my face and let me know. As always, thanks for watching the reviews. I'm Chase Lee, and this was another review live from the Dallas International Film Festival, and I'll have plenty more uh, coming your way. Uh, so let me go ahead and play the outro music. Goodbye, everyone.